As if desktop metal wasn't already making enough acquisitions, they just added another one to the book. Though, judging only from the last six months share price activity, one would be fair in assuming desktop metal is on the brink of bankruptcy or even some massive Exxon level scandal over here. Check it out, here is the six month chart reminding you of how foolish we've all been to invest in such a speculative nonsense company. With a 52 week range of $6.70 all the way up to almost 35 bucks, desktop metal shareholders are being encouraged to learn how to 3D print their own gallows as the company continues to melt down like an ice cream cone on the Las Vegas Strip. Dude, and speaking of melting in Las Vegas, after high school, some of my family moved out to Denver. And a few times a year, I would throw some friends in the backseat of my Celica and drive out to visit them from Los Angeles. One year, on the 18-hour drive back, a big rig had overturned across every lane of the 15 freeway, bringing traffic to a complete stop in the 112 degree desert heat for like two hours. I took advantage of the egregious heat by taking to the street to see if I could pedal my Costco box of Gatorade to overheating drivers. The box cost me like 11 bucks, is like one of those, you know, something like that, big. Um, and I had like half of it left and went out and I quadrupled my money. So that was the last time I was in a traffic jam outside of Vegas. Back to desktop metal melting down, despite a Kardashian tier shopping spree for new complimentary companies to add to their repertoire, one of the detracting factors that fundamental investors and analysts are seeing in the company is purely that the numbers haven't started to add up yet. They're saying, there's not enough revenues, there's not enough profits, Frankly, this company's a dumpster fire, mate. And on top of that, they've been issuing stocks to fund this shopping spree, which dilutes shareholder value even more. Cash holdings have gone from almost a half billion in previous quarters to as low as this penis punch, which needless to say, kept the guy out of the fight for a while. As they've managed to burn more than $300 million off the balance sheet compared to a couple of quarters ago. But when a fresh young company like Desktop Metal is acquiring so many solid companies though, you can't really blame them for burning through cash, right? But the real challenge for investors is determining how long it's gonna take for those acquisitions to start cranking out more cash than they costed. And Wall Street like super doesn't think it's gonna be anytime soon. As is par for the course with new companies, particularly SPACs, all of the standard, standard metrics for measuring the growth and profitability of a company just don't work because this last completed quarter was finally the first time Desktop Metal had a positive gross profit at only 2.3 million, leading to a net loss of 43 million. EV EBITDA is starting to fall, uh, and I think it's at 24-ish now in the most recently completed quarter, but that's still far from an appealing number. It's really just too early for these metrics to help us. So at this point, you're wondering why I'm even invested in this company and why you shouldn't sell your shares at like a 70% loss. This is where the good news starts. On top of all of the recent flurry of acquisitions, Desktop Metal just acquired Adro, an Italian additive manufacturing company, which apparently offers best-in-class expertise covering finite element analysis simulation and topology optimization techniques. Leveraging this expertise, their engineers redesigned traditional hydraulic components eliminating many steps in the production process and producing a far superior product. Adro already has its own additive manufacturing facilities on top of its traditional manufacturing and already provides parts for a bunch of leading OEMs apparently. So zooming back out, let's remind ourselves of how manufacturing works currently. You wanna build a nice little intricate wooden piece for your Bentley's dashboard? Cut down a tree, ship it across the planet, then have an experienced woodworker handcraft the part for your vehicle, or just have Desktop Metal's new forest process upcycle some wood for you and print it for you en masse in moments to sell to OEMs. Busted a tooth? Got your ear cut off? Get them handcrafted by specialists, taking weeks and huge expense, or go to Desktop Metal's Envision Tech, who can print replacements of resin or polymer in minutes at a drastically reduced price. Following down that path is the phonograph portion of the Beacon Bio acquisition, which gets into biofabrication for pieces that can be used for surgery and repairing of the human body. Traditionally, smartphones and other complex electronics are made from hundreds of parts, sourced from dozens of different manufacturers, and then assembled into a complete product. Managing supply chains and factories in and of itself is a massive, massive industry, but Desktop Metal's new Aerosynth acquisition threatens to upend much of that by combining additive manufacturing and flexible polymer parts, 
eliminating steps in the manufacturing process. Also, the recent X1 acquisition grants desktop metal access to almost 300 new patents and a much broader catalog to be able to meet uh, niche client needs even more specifically. Along with this deal, desktop metal uh, also gain access to the larger market of X1's existing client base, and they should be able to continue serving them with X1's existing products and even maybe retrofit, you know, new desktop metal stuff to improve the processes. And now with the new Ager acquisition, desktop metals reach extends further out into hydraulics and even further into the vehicle OEM industry. So while it's easy to get excited about all these new materials and technologies and patents that are starting to stockpile, has that translated into any increasing sales yet? Thankfully, yes. The shop system, the world's first metal binder jetting system designed for machine shops, is gaining momentum with European customers. Desktop Metal reported robust demand for manufacturers across France, Finland, Germany, Greece, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and the Netherlands, and the UK. So the world is starting to see the advantages of additive manufacturing. As Desktop Metal was finally able to pull off volume shipments of the shop system at the end of 2020, the advantages in cost savings and speed provided to their clients are going to start flowing over into the market. And when that happens, competitors will realize their need to catch up spurring further growth because it's hard to keep up when your competitor using desktop metal stuff can produce parts 10 times faster than you can, right? Not to mention all of the supply chain madness we've been seeing around the world is probably going to start strengthening the push for manufacturers to be able to put out their own complex parts in their own machine shops. For the first half of the year, Desktop Metal only reported revenues of about $29 million, uh, with just over 11 million in the first quarter and almost 19 million in the second quarter. But in the annual report, Desktop Metal encouraged their newly homeless investors with the fact that they would be hitting probably about $100 million in revenues for the year so far. So that leaves us with another 71 million of revenues that they're expecting in the rest of this year. They have their next earnings report in about a month. Um, and then the final one of the year, well, the fourth one, um, would probably come out a, another three months after that. I wouldn't exactly call myself a quant math boy, but uh, there's going to be some gains, you know what I mean? And while we've seen their workforce more than double from like 200-ish humans last year to more than 500 this year, uh, combined with their nearly doubled patent library and massively extended market reach and distribution provided by all these acquisitions, I'm convinced that we're just at the beginning of the tides turning. And so you've got to ask yourself, if you believed in desktop metal when the share price was 15 or 20 bucks, why would you stop believing them now after all these acquisitions have gone through? The numbers don't look good, but no growing company who's plowing all they've got into growth looks good. <coughs> Amazon for like 10 years. I have continued to add to my position as the price stays low because I'm pretty comfortable with their leadership and it seems like execution isn't gonna be a problem. That being said, Desktop Metal only makes up like 4% or less of my portfolio. So it's not like I'm YOLOing all, all in on them or anything like that. I'm just really excited for the opportunity. And I kind of wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being one of those stocks that allows me to retire much earlier than I expected I'd be able to. If you're already in Desktop Metal, you're thinking about getting into it, you gotta understand the details of the acquisition. So click right here on this video. I love you guys and stay generous. This company doesn't have enough revenues, it doesn't have enough profits. This thing's just a dumpster fire.